You're joking, right? Well, yeah. I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic yeah. about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid. Hey, Brian, I've got to hide the belly. Hide the belly. Well, I'm on, bo- to, on me. I'm, ta- on I'm both trying to lose weight. I'm trying to do better. How you doing, buddy boy? Nice yeah, I feel you. like always... In the- it's come. also posture too, though a lot. Yeah, like this hunched over and this right. But like on me, my weight only goes to right in my stomach. I don't gain weight anywhere else Most in my body men, except yeah, just I get, right I my get stomach. In my belly too. It's so weird. And I, a little bit of like my jawline will get. It's a men less. hair, yeah. and the belly. That's where we get it. It's so weird. We get in their asses we, and their hips and their. Yeah. Thick thighs. Some guys or have, yeah. they have it in the under flat. That's a tough, that comes with age. That's yeah. a hard thing even for men. You got to work on that shit. Yeah, you got to keep the tries strong. Yeah, those are all right for my age. Eh. A little hard. Feel no, that, I'm joking. Feel that fucker. There you go. Little hard, that's what she said. Feel, little hard, feel that fucker, that's what she said. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's that. <laughs> okay. I do, though, feel like... It's definitely um, seasonal for me. It always, it's been my whole life. Like, I feel like- You have not been eating that way, I gotta be honest with you. No, I haven't. You need to cut that, you know, check yourself. What a, I started this podcast, I gotta lose the belly. That's what you I started too, uh, ten the podcast on saying. I get it. But it's seasonal. It's like the spring and summer, I always lose weight. And then the fall, winter, I always gain weight. Always. It's but like- your a, age, you should always look good. There's no excuse. I always do look good. Yes, you do. I didn't mean that you did not look good. That's correct. <laughs> it's hard though- um, it creeps up on you. Well, the problem is... You know what I'm talking about, my peeps. The problem is it... Like, weight for me can fluctuate so easily that it's a blessing and a curse. Because I can drop the pounds I want in, like, two weeks. But that means I can also put the pounds that I don't want on in, like, two meals. Like, if I eat two... Literally, if I eat one meal, I see it the next day. It's really annoying. Where some people, they're like... <laughs> like, I know people my age... Who can eat whatever the fuck they want? Yeah, Burke, and nothing. Burke's pretty good like that. Yeah, but Burke works out a lot. To, True to counterbalance so, it. We, you know, we were away this week in our friend's house, and the group could drink. Like, how is it they they don't gain so much weight? It is definitely a weight a weight gainer. Oh, definitely. But, it's but just the empty amount, calories. But the amount they fucking drink, how do you not gain all that weight? They probably do. They probably would look that? better without it. I don't know. How do they not even? It's it's brutal. It's it's too much. What can I tell you? It's a little hard for me when everybody's fucking drinking up a storm. I got to tell you, I don't, I don't enjoy it as much. And we're Why to, would you? We're going to Napa next week. Um, and I love the group. Like, I love the group. Of people. But when everybody's drinking, I'm not enjoying it as much, Bron. I get that. So, like, last night we went out <coughs> to a bar, Throw Social in Delray. Shout out because it's a great place and it's our friend's place. Great place. Um. But we went out there and I didn't drink because I was like, I knew I had shit I wanted to do today. Like, I needed to get some studying done. I knew I had this podcast. I didn't want to be hungover at any regard. And now, even if I have like two drinks, I feel it the next day because I don't sleep well. Even, you know, even one drink, I don't but sleep even well. Even the one cigar I have, like I have two a month, the one cigar I have that night, I don't get a good night's sleep from yeah. the cigar. Yeah, because you're, bo- you're introducing something new to your body. Yeah, I'm not loving it. So I like that I'm like mature enough now where I'm like, no, I want tomorrow to be good, so I'm not going to drink tonight. And I still have fun when I go out. Like, we went out, I was out till. 132 with all my friends. We we're still having a great time, but it's definitely like I, I'm, if I compare that to going out on Friday night, which we did too in Miami, and I did drink, not get drunk, but I did drink with everyone. It's definitely not as fun. Of course not. And you don't know, I guess you don't know the fun side of it because you don't <clears throat> no, drink. No, no, but, but first of all, so Brian, I'm, ag- I'm agreeing with you. you. Of are. course it's not fun, not as fun if you're sober and everyone else is not. Which sucks. I, but remember, we're also in our 50s and early 60s. So it's a little bit different than me in your 20s. So for example, um, I, my whole life I've gone out with people and they all drink. That's not, I have zero issue with that. And not to sound narcissistic, but I'm funnier or sober than they all are drunk. So I, I definitely am more entertained in that regard. The problem is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But agreed. it's the truth. It's it is the, the truth. truth. It is the truth. Okay. But, but the problem that I have is why it's unjoyable is I don't care if they drink. I just choose not to. It's the excessive drinking and the personality's changing. I just that's where it's triggered. I just don't enjoy it. I'm personality's yeah. changing. I get I that. I don't enjoy it. But but what's the difference between like besides the person uh, personality changing? Which some people it doesn't. For some people it does. 
What's the difference between three drinks and, and eight drinks? Like, why because would, they, why would because, you if, judge one no, more no, than the other? Because if they have two drinks and it doesn't affect how they act, it's like me having two glasses of water. I, I don't care. If they're having drinks and now they're getting trashed and it changes their behavior, I care. Because it what if it changes it? their behavior in a better way? Like, sometimes there are people no. who are so much funnier when they're drunk. They're all funny. It's not about that. They're all funny. It's just that you're like, I want to hang out with you. But, I, but it's not like, I'm like, really? We need to get drunk? You know what I'm saying? This, no, that's my right. point. I, I agree. So therefore, it's it's or or the whole but thing. That's is, why it's fun when you all get drunk together no, because the, then you're all okay. your personalities change but together. You're, but you're in your 20s. Yeah, fair. we're in our 50s and early 60s. So so to me, we had a great time and I love everyone. But the thing is, why does the whole event at noon where everyone's got to start? It's the conversation about drinking. I hate that. Yeah, that's just American culture. I but I don't like it. I don't enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, I agree. It's, and now I'm going to Napa where every this is like my fifth time around. Well, Napa to- literally is a vacation to drink. You can't be like, I'm going to Napa, but I hate, but I'm going to complain about drinking. Not complain. I just fuck. That's like being like, I'm going to go to the Bahamas, but I'm going to complain about beat the beaches the whole time. It's like uh, you're going to a place for. But you can go and have a good time. You don't have to start drinking fucking ten o'clock in the morning till fucking midnight. Yeah, what you need to do then is convince everyone to no, be I'm such convincing. No, well, the the highest of wine connoisseurs spit their alcohol out. They don't swallow it. That's what she said. Are they Jewish people? <laughs> Jewish women? So you got to you gotta convince the group that you guys, that they shouldn't swallow the alcohol that they I drink. I guess I wouldn't mind it, Bronnie, if it was less frequent than when we, every time we go out, it's all about alcohol. That's the part I don't enjoy. But has that, is that a new thing in your life or has no, that been your I, whole I, life? Because th- I, I, I think a, that's just America. No, I think it's more new that it's, it's, the past couple of years has been so prevalent where these middle-aged people drink so much. But like, what else are you guys going to do? Hang out and talk and have fun. You yeah. Can, I do it. But, but, but to most people, hanging out, talking, and having fun, alcohol makes the hangout more hangout. Well, then, it makes the fun the, more fun yeah, and it makes the talking better. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm being honest, I just don't get it. I will never understand it. It just is, it's, it's a turnoff for me. It's, a, it's somewhat of a trigger, right? I just don't enjoy it. I actually get more quiet. When you start talking about alcohol, like if you want to drink, drink, but talking about it is a fucking turnoff to me. That's all. Yeah, well, because it's like, what, like. Grow up. You want to drink, like, what's your, per, like, what's, and then what are we doing And talk about here? the wine. This wine bottle, this was the best, this one, and whatever, like. No, well, oh that's my. like, like, you talk about cigars, or cars, or, no. or watches. <laughs> Do you want to say no? But, but not like the high, whole thing. But like high end wine is more of a collector thing than it is an alcohol thing. Just like high end watches, whatever. Like is. your watch isn't any better than a two hundred dollar watch. Oh no, that's a little bit different. The Actually, mechanism, a digital watch no. will keep the time better than your okay. Mechanical one is worth time. more. One of craftsmanship. The pads right, but, are going. But that's what a high end wine is: craftsmanship. It's artistry. It's the taste and the connoisseur of the wine. You know, but I don't sit like, there and talk about a watch for four hours. Okay, you like to watch it. You want to see it, and I give it back. We don't drop it. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't say Ta- don't drop it because so then you will drop it. Talking about only to you. Talking about alcohol to me is it can't boil it down to one word: boring. Just very boring. I I enjoy alcohol, and I agree that it is boring as well to talk about it. Yeah, of course. Do I talk about my water? Well, it's different. No, well, it's a liquid. I actually do talk about water. I have strong it's opinions on water. It's, it's, it's yeah, but boring. like we'll talk about food. Food's just a food, but not for hours. Like not to me, hours, I would. Who's talking about anything for hours? Wait, That's do. ridiculous. I would say, wouldn't you want to order what you're ordering? But what do you mean that? How? Do, what do they talk about for hours? Uh, your the, the, your friend group is with each other every single weekend, and they're talking about alcohol every. What gotta, are they talking you about? You had to kind of got to hear a conversation about the wine. You you would want to kill yourself. But what more can you say about wine than mm, this is good? I like this one. My this is my favorite. This one is a, this one I don't like with but this how, bottle. But, but how do you not? already all know those opinions about each other. You hang out multiple days a week, every week. What new can you talk about with your friends? Oh, there's plenty of, what do you mean? There's plenty you can talk about. No, but I'm talking about like wine. What new can you talk about? Oh, no, you got it. Yeah, it's, it's hysterical. You'll say. If you listen, you would get a kick out of it. You would say, yeah. No, well, every so time. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time being around that dynamic. So what do you Love do? my friends. I have to, I, me, I don't know what the compromise is because I love my friends. And your mother. It's not about that. Well, what do you... There's two options. You just, <coughs> I guess, suck it up or you do something about or it. Or they could do it in moderation and not... Why does it... Re, do you say... If we, if we sat down at dinner and all we did was talk about the food, I'd be like, this is 
painful. Right, but, but if that's but if you're the only one that doesn't like it, then you're in the wrong. No, I'm the normal. No, no, that's not yes, true. Yes, yes. No. Not at all. Normal. So, so the definition so, of normal is what, so what, the, so what, what the majority so people, of people are doing. So most people are entitled. Is that normal? 100%. You say you, all the time. You it's normal in American society. You understand what I'm saying, though, when I say it's not. I mean, it's Right, and you up. understand what I'm saying. Yes. You're saying from a true definition standpoint, the majority is what the I'm normal is. I'm saying a friend group, bond, like a friends are friends for a certain reason, right? And if nine out of the ten friends all like one thing, then the one friend who doesn't like it is the one who doesn't belong in the friend group. Or maybe, I, maybe, is, maybe, I, maybe I don't belong. <laughs> But it's like that, but you can't say that the one is the normal one in the friend group. They're the French friend. You always have a French friend because they don't quite get the rest of the friend group. You're the fringe guy. Yeah, sure I am. <laughs> there would be no group of friends if it wasn't for me. That is very true as well. That right, is very so true. So they're all fringes. Yeah. Bitches. You can't be all fringes. That's not how it works, but that's why. You can't if you're an area rug. Thank you, Ronnie. Such Appreciate a bad it. joke. Hey, hey, I'm a guy. Um, what else? Oh, uh, oh, by the way, I want to say something. So I watched the last part of YouTube of the of the episode where I said I'm so proud of you with the dating thing about the guy who wrote in. Last week's it. episode. Okay. I watched it. I just want to see because I was so proud of you. I'm like, all right, I raised him right. I meant to tell you before we got on, on the pod, let's play with the rope, with the cord. With this. Yeah, you do it. No, put it down. Why? Who cares? No, put it down. I see it because it's right. Just put it down. You're a professional now. I don't want you playing with it. I thought about getting a little fidgety thing. You could just play and become your trademark, but I don't want you playing with that. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to say something nice. Is you were that like, mean? No, it's not me, but I, you were like, I, said, I wanted to tell you this before the podcast. I, 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 I wanted to rewatch because I was so proud of you. But I said that. Hey, proud of you. Don't touch the thing. Wait, but I said, but I said, <laughs> rewatch yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Do I ever watch them? Ever. Never, never. Okay. So proud of you. I was telling everybody this weekend about it too. Oh, God. No, I'm proud of you. You know, you shit. <laughs> well, I've learned. No, but I'm proud I didn't, of you. I didn't know. And if you don't know what we're talking about, last you just no. If you don't know, week, watch some of last week's right. episode. Right, you have that's to watch I, it. That's what. But I, I noticed say. you're playing with it. I want you to stop it. This is your growth. It's you the do that a lot. Cord. I know. But then what else do you want me to? I have to fidget with something. Next episode, it's the, it's the Mr. Some. Megorium uh, Wonder, wonderful Aporium? Yeah, it's that syndrome because in that movie, Natalie Portman's character is always fidgeting with stuff, and everyone in her life is like giving her shit about it, right? And she's like, whatever, whatever. And then at the end of the movie, it's revealed that she actually was a secret genius, that it was un, that it was locked in her head, <laughs> mm-hmm. this magical symphony, and that that's what the okay. fidgeting was. It was trying to get out. Okay. So I need to unlock my okay. secret genius. I, I don't th- and you're stifling. No, 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 no. My there's no I'm not judging you and, and putting it as a negative. I'm just saying no, you're that just trying to stop. You me. just don't need to do that. And then when you're watching, you see it and you you don't need to do that. But it is who I am. But I'm asking you to grow and not do that. Don't ask me to change. Like picking, I am asking you. You have a lot of growth as a twenty-six year old. Just like when I say stop picking your fingers. That's all. The thing though with my fingers, it's really funny how clear picking my fingers is of a stress. Of course indicator. it is. I do. You see my thumbs. My fingers are so much worse the last two weeks. Yeah, why is that? Because my studying is like getting, like I'm getting to the end. My test is in less than two weeks, so I'm like not stressed in a bad way, but stressed to There's in a good still way. Stress, yeah. There just is stress because I'm, you know, trying to do this thing. I have this goal that I have a deadline on. So I've noticed so much. My fingers are so much worse than they were like um, two months ago before I. We'll try to make conscious effort not to do it. I do. do and then okay. and then I'll just be like working on something. And, and then I'll notice were, that I'm starting to always bleed wore my fi- fingers. Uh, you always wear a fidgeter. That's how my oh, stress manifests. It's a little, you got from your Uncle Lloyd. It, it's a little autist, but it's fine. It's all right. Then you get that part from your mother. <laughs> What's going on? What do we got? I definitely. On? No, never mind. Um, what was I going to say? How was your weekend? I just told you. It was good. We went yeah. out Friday, Saturday. Where'd you go Friday? You don't know it. It's called the Miami. M-A-Y. Oh, I've A-M-I. seen that. With the Miami Bucks. Yes. With Ross. Ross yes. had a good time? Yes. Shout out to Ross. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Did you Ross get him laid? Wilson's. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. No problem. Glad you had fun. Who went out Friday night? Do you want me to list everyone's name? A large group? Yeah, there were like 15 people. How nice is you that? Want to li- you want me to no, go through all their no, names? No, I don't want you. You know, like three of them. I just want to get an idea. A lot of people. Okay. Yeah, that was right. it. The, it was a, just a Do you guys weekend. ever go like, like when we used to go out back when we were growing up in high school, college or whatever, we used to always hit a diner late night. Do you guys ever hit food like two in the morning? Yeah, but not diners. There will, will be like a Cuban restaurant or... There's nothing better than a good Cuban sandwich. Like a Ray good, Buzz or something. A good pressed Cuban sandwich is fucking killer. Or like in our building, there's a place open... 
there's a Mexican restaurant open until like three. The Uncle Brown. That has really good wine. quesadillas. Yeah, he told me about that 12 times. But they're like $20, which is insane for a quesadilla. But so we do do food. I mean, you, you got to get It's funny you regret it afterwards, but it was so good going Oh, back. I feel horrible always. But it's so or like good. like McDonald's at the end of the night. No, that's the worst. Right. That's straight diarrhea. No, it like blocks me up, not diarrhea. It's the opposite. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> um, there's not much going on in the world. There was a lot going, but like last week, so much going on. Remember, last Patreon episode was a great one. If you didn't listen to it, <laughs> go join. It was, we talked about Nord Stream, not Nordstrom. We talked about Nord Stream. Nord Stream is what again? The pipeline that burst. Yep, interesting. And it's still leaking. Oh, that's so sad. And the like World Health Organization or someone or the UN or something said that this is going to be like <laughs> the biggest climate disaster. That's so sad, isn't it? In modern history. And it's like, it's also that makes me sketchy about it too because it's like, so we know that this is a, Huge climate disaster, but no one's fucking people. Fix it. People are like kind of talking about it, kind of, but they're not talking about it from a climate aspect. They're talking about it from like who blew who this did up. It? Yeah, when the BP oil spill happened, which was like minuscule catastrophic, compared to this, right? For years, we saw commercials and the news and pictures of baby birds with oil. Right. This is more catastrophic than that to our world, and no one's really that was banks. Like, no one's really that talking about it. That couldn't have been Banks. That was a car. No, it wasn't. That was Banks growling. Look, I'm going to go to the New York Times. Yeah. Not a single, right? Not a single article on it. It's terrible. Let's see. Let's go to Fox. I said, Fo- I said Fox New, not Fox News. Not a single thing about it. Look, not a single. All right. But that's, that. Shows you the propaganda. That's just narrative. a red. It's a red flag because yeah, it's like there's many red something flags. is wrong with this whole situation, and someone's trying to hide something because otherwise they would be talking about it. <clears throat> yeah, I guess you're probably right. Hey, you know President Carter's our oldest living president. Here, this is the final. This is the first. Yeah, just thought I'd share that with you. This is what thirty articles. Oh, you would never get to that. Thirty articles down. You it would. says, "quote all evidence." End quote, on German pipeline damage points to sabotage, NATO chief says. That's, but look, not even a single thing about the environment, about environmental stuff. No, because that's pol- the political narrative. That's why. But wouldn't the left, that's what's sketchy about it. The left should be like, this is a climate disaster. We have to, and the left is super anti Russia right now with this war. Why isn't it being fixed? I think it is being fixed, but they, it's not an instant, like, How do, it's so scary. How do you even fix that? Stop fishing. I don't know. But does that not, like, it just feels weird that the, it feels like a perfect story for the left, me, like the liberal media to glob onto. It's environmental, it's governmental sabotage, and it's anti-Russia. It's like, that's the left's bread and butter right now. I don't understand why they're not milking the shit out of this story. I don't it's know. Weird. I don't know. It's I don't weird. understand half the stuff that goes on. Um, I get, I, yeah, it's. But we could talk about other shit. Yeah, well, another thing that happened. So we talked last week in the Patreon episode too about like all the situation with Russia and Putin and Ukraine and stuff. And there was a development as of two days ago. Um, Ukraine signed their app, like, and submitted their application to join NATO. I thought that's been going on trying to get in part of NATO for a long time. Well, so that's why this war happened. The reason why Putin invaded is because Ukraine was like getting cozier to the West and with like the goal of maybe flirting with joining NATO. And he wanted to take it over before that became a problem. Yeah, because that was like his one thing. When, like when the Soviet Union ended, sorry, I'm playing with the cord. When the Soviet Union ended, the whole thing, the whole reason why there was peace and stability was that Russia w- was like, we want to like have our sphere of influence still be us. Like we want Poland and Ukraine and Latvia and Estonia and Georgia, right? All these Eastern countries that were part of the Soviet Union. They're like, they're our sphere of influence. They're our, like, just like how America's sphere of influence, right? It's like Canada and Mexico and UK, like they're our people. Mm -hmm. They're our allies. So the whole thing after the Soviet Union ended, Russia was like, peace will be fine. We'll all be able to work together. But these are our guys. Like, don't, meddle with them let them be under our 
I just hit my fucking... Bronny. <laughs> the mic into my You dude. never got that fixed, did you? No, but I'm going tomorrow to the Oh, dentist. good, okay. Bronny, come on, buddy. I know um, you're passionate, but wow. And so Maybe we need to move it a little bit lower. I can't because it'll... How's that? Well, is it going to yeah, stay? That works, that works. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. See, look, it's not staying. That's what she said. All right, you need to fix it. Um, All right, go ahead. So the whole thing... They wanted to gain, like, remain as much in control of the East as possible because that would give them power, right? Just like how we have power because we have most of Europe on our side, most of North America on our side, right? Over the last 30 years since that's happened, those countries have become more and more westernized, right? Like, you don't think of Poland. You think of Poland as part of Europe, not as part of, like, Asia, okay. right? You Like, all right. these countries are their own countries and... America has been like very buddy buddy up to them, and a lot of them have even joined NATO. And Ukraine was like one of the last ones. It was very much Russian in like in culture and ethnicity and history. And in 2014, we no was it 2008 or 2014? Some sometime in the last 10 years, America kind of there used to be like a pro Russian leader. Like, their president was buddies with Putin. And then we got rid... Like, we helped the Ukrainians get rid of that president. And we put in a government that was pro-American. That was, like, buddies, buddies with America. And so it's, like... The, the whole thing... I was listening to Dave Smith talk about this this week. Which was good. He said the one word that everyone in the media is using about this war and, like, Putin invading Ukraine is unprovoked, right? Like, that's everyone you hear is saying, this was an unprovoked attack, unprovoked attack. And it's like, how is it unprovoked when the one thing that they said was like, don't come into our sphere of influence. Like, let us deal with these countries over the last 30 years. And then all we've done over the last 30 years is chip away country by country by country to bring them to our side. It's like, he used the analogy. It's like, what if Russia, in, what if Russia went into Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal and started like overthrowing their governments, putting in their pro-Russia people right on our borders, we'd be like, we would probably just invade, right? We would probably march troops into Toronto and be like, no, 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 we're putting in the old people that were our friends. This is our ally, not yours. Okay. So the one thing that he was like said, he said multiple times, Ukraine cannot join NATO. I'm against that. And as of two days ago, they submitted their application. And it's like, on the one hand, do I want Ukraine? Is it beneficial to Ukrainians to be part of NATO? Yes. Is it beneficial to the world? No. It's going to cause a huge... If Hopefully NATO doesn't even accept their application. They shouldn't. Like, because that will probably cause World War III. It probably will. Putin has nothing to lose now. That's what we talked about last week, right? I said he's like... He's, there are rumors of him being sick. He's losing this war. They keep having to pull out Russian troops. He's losing support in Russia. It's amazing losing the war. It's unbelievable. It's it's worrying because he said too. He, what did he say last week? Let's see. Putin nuclear weapons. Um, what did he say? This is from New York Times yesterday. In Washington, Putin's nuclear threats stir growing alarm. In the gathering in a gathering Cold War atmosphere, American officials are gaming out responses should Russia resort to battlefield nuclear weapons. And this is all in response to the NATO. It says here, in a speech on Friday, Putin raised the prospect anew, calling the United States and NATO enemies seeking Russia's collapse and declaring again that he would, quote, use all available means to defend Russian territory, which he has now declared includes eastern Ukraine. Mr. Putin reminded the world of President Truman's decision to drop atomic weapons on Hiroshima and Nagasaki 77 years ago, adding, quote, by the way, they created a precedent. On Saturday, the leader of the Southern Republic of Chechnya said Putin should consider using low-yield nuclear weapons in Ukraine, becoming the first prominent Russian official to openly call for such a strike. Senior American officials say they think the chances remain low. They say they have seen no evidence that he is moving out of the... It's just... Even the talk is scary. And no one's trying to de-escalate it. No one on the American side is trying to be like, whoa, 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 let's try to work out a deal here. Everything from the American side is, Putin is evil. This needs to stop. He's a war criminal. Maybe this is what brings Putin to a, brings him down. 
Right, but it, but that's what's dangerous about well, it. Well, I don't know, but maybe... He has the button. Okay, so as okay. he's going down, he's going to go boop and take everyone down with him. Don't we have things that can stop the nuclear missiles? No, no, we don't. No Scud missiles? Once those are launched, we will launch our own. Like, it's not like we will launch some to intercept them. They'll be launched, and as a retaliation, we'll have to launch our own. All right, then it is what it is, bro. Or we can say, hey, oh, 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 oh. let's Who, all talk. Biden? Who's going to say it? No, Seriously, that's the problem. I mean, that's the problem. If it was fucking Trump, it would never even get to that point. But it's, it's <laughs> scary, and it's worrying. It's not surprising, because it's what the U.S. government does all the time. They're warmongering. Like, they want... Yeah, everything on the be. left or not on the left everything on the government side because it's right and left like no one right. in this government is saying hey What's guys for the people let's can we like negotiate something there's they're literally the the white house is saying there are no negotiations well, I, don't, I don't think even putin is even can be can make himself visible to negotiate he's he like would. hiding isn't no, but he? he's losing and we're saying that we're we're saying there are no negotiations available like we're not even approaching the negotiation table. And he said at the beginning, like in the middle of this thing, like I think like a month ago or a couple months ago, when after they invaded, but not while they were still like winning, he said he would, I don't remember the exact con- like concede that he said he would do, but he basically was like, I'll be happy if we just, like if Ukraine doesn't join NATO and if I get to keep like Donbass region and Crimea, like the places that Russia already Took. Destroyed. Yeah, like, not destroyed, took and annexed. Because, I mean, there are people living there. They're not, I don't think they're happy. Some of them might be, some of them not. We don't know the full situation because both sides are lying to us, right? The left is, li- or not the left, the American government is lying and the Russian government is lying about the truth. Like, we're not in Ukraine. We're not talking to people. Um, it's just scary that our, that there is a very, even if it's low, a real threat of a nuclear weapon being fired off, right? Like, not, it's not, it's a real threat. There's a situation, we're closer today than ever before since the Cold War to a nuclear weapon actually being fired off. And our government is doubling down on their offense, not on defense. Like, it doesn't make sense. I think they just want war. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. It's something we have no control over. There's no, there's no way... Right? Like, we have to be realistic about the situation now. There's no way the winner is a full winner. There has to be a compromise. Because right. let's say even if Ukraine, with the help of America, because we just sent over another $12 trillion, whatever, like, oh, the week, the couple days before the storm of, hit in Florida. What a waste of fucking money. And now there's, like, not money to help what these people a, in Florida. What a fucking waste of money. So it's, the Americans are involved in this war, for better or worse. Like, we're sending money and... Right, well, of course. And weapons. We're selling missiles and shit. Terrible. Even if we win, right? Like, let's say we take out all the Russian soldiers. We push them fully out of, of Ukraine. Ukraine becomes fully part of NATO. It's like... Some, that's going to trigger something. It's not going to... 100%. You think Putin's just going to be like, all right, okay, I lost, I lost. I'll pack it up. I'll come back to Moscow. We'll try again in 30 years. No, something drastic will happen from that. Or the other way around is Russia wins. The other extreme is Russia completely wins and obliterates Ukraine, and Ukraine becomes part of Russia. And then as, as of now, with how the Europe, NATO, and the U.S. has positioned themselves, they would never let that happen, right? Let's say tomorrow, for some reason, Russia gains so much more power in Ukraine and takes over the whole country. NATO would get involved. They just would, right? Like, America would get involved. We'd probably send troops or something. So that's the other extreme. So those are the two extremes. It has to be somewhere in the middle where we have to have, we have, to have a compromise. I know, no one can full out our, win. Uh, but our government is, is weak. It's weak. So who knows what kind of compromise it would be? It's terrible. I don't even know if it's that it, the problem is that it's weak. It's that they <laughs> want it. What do you mean they want? Oh, they, mean want not, right. w- they don't want to stop the problem. If they wanted to stop the problem... They would talk to Putin. You have to talk to your enemy. You can't just be like, pretend they don't exist, but then keep funneling money to fight them. It'll, otherwise, it'll go on for years and years and years, right? If we want to stop this problem, we say, okay, let's call, let's sit down. Biden, NATO, EU, Zelensky, and Putin. Let's sit down and hash this out. They're all, they, they, it can be hashed out. It could be. 
Zelensky might have to give up some parts of Ukraine. Sucks. That really does suck. But it is what it is. That's the world we live in. And Putin might have to agree to just take those parts and move on and move on and, and call it, call it a loss. But no one's even talking about that. No one. Hmm. That's what's weird to me. It just doesn't make sense. The only rational explanation that would explain that is they want it. They want war. Yeah, I know nothing about it. It very well could be, and I'm sure there's so much money. Like you always said, there's so much money made in war, and there's such corruption. But this is their playbook. They've done it before, right? We saw it. 2001 happened, 9-11, or was that 2002? 2001. One. Happened, and the U.S. government was used that as an excuse to fight a 20-year war that, that didn't was worthless. End- yeah, it wasn't even anything. It was all a fraud. It was literally, they were like, we have evidence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So we're going to go in. First of all, the, the people who blew up the Twin Towers were even, weren't even Iraqis. They just used I, it as an excuse. I got, a, I got a related question to that. Just like, And then different. 20 years and trillions of dollars later. And the, you, yeah, and we left everything there. Yeah, and it's like. And it's now back to And the, people made billions off of that Who's war. running again? What terrorist group again? Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Quick question for you. Whatever happened with... Um, what was that middle Iran? They're What's still the deal in with that. It's weird. That's another weird situation too. What's going on in Iran or Iran, whichever? That protest, from what we've seen now, and it's, it's still we're like going to talk brief about it. It's like right. still in the dark, kind of, but it's going like extreme now. The freedoms are are it going in a positive way. It's going in a positive way, but it's also like becoming super like. I don't know how to explain it correctly. It feels like they're going so extreme that it's going to become like a communist state. Like the, the protesters are like becoming intense. Like it's like bra burnings now. And like people are walking around like showing their tits like back in like f- oh, it's new wave excessive. feminism. It's of, excessive. Right. It's becoming like that they got, if you get an inch you and take you take a foot. A foot. Yeah. That's what it feels like is happening. But I guess that's still a net positive because there are freedoms. getting freedoms. But there are videos now of like women walking around like proudly with without a hijab on, just like walking through the streets, and no one's doing anything. Good, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, but also today, I saw this on Twitter today. Let's see if I can find it. No, oh, Hillary. Yeah, what even was that? Ex Clinton advisor Hillary setting up twenty twenty four presidential bid with open borders critique of Biden. What? Let's read that. Hillary Clinton is dusting off her husband's playbook by criticizing the Biden administration's open borders to put herself in a place to mount a 2024 presidential run. Uh, Dick Morris, veteran political consultant, said. So we don't know if that's true. Morris was an aide to Bill Clinton and said Hillary is setting up herself to enter the race as a moderate. Oh, she's for, she's disassociating herself as a for her third gem? shot in the White House. Oh my God! That's but see, even that's a problem. So if Hillary Clinton wants wants to distance herself from the Democratic Party, Could you we're imagine? fucked. What Could the you hell's imagine? going on in this country? She's so evil. I saw this video in Iran about Iran Parliament today. You mean Iran? Yeah, that too. They look like they're running. Here, this is what I saw. This was today from make it bigger Iranian Parliament. Uh, members of parliament, so it's like they're Congress. Let me see. And you're Can you make a bigger bud? <laughs> so they're speaking a different language. What they're saying is death to America. This is in their Congress. The, the members of Congress are chanting that together. And it's that's America. That's what people said. Look at these fucks. So it's like, look at these fucks. Could you, I would go in and bomb the entire bomb that building right now. Could you imagine? It says uh, Iran MPs chanting tired slogan in the parliament today, like death to America, signaling how out of touch they are with the Iranian people protesting. That's from Jason Brodsky. I don't know what that is. Um, but see, that's also scary too. It's like the, yeah, the revolution in Iran radicals. is pushing the radicals. Yep. And it's so tricky too because then it's like- It's all men, by the way, in the parliament. Of course. Yeah, I don't think a woman's allowed to. I don't think legally a woman's allowed to. 
Yeah, this is from AP News today. This was posted. Top Iran official warns against protests amid serious unrest. Um, Iran's, Iran's parliament speaker warned Sunday that protests over the death of a young woman in police custody will destabilize the country and urge security forces to deal harshly with those he claimed endanger public order as countrywide unrest enters its third week. Um, I'm glad this is happening. Yeah, I but am. like, doesn't matter. They're openly has, chanting. Okay, but it doesn't. It has to happen. We know that there's a lot of people in, in Iran that want America to be destroyed. We know we know that for years. But I'm happy these women are getting the freedom and that people. And there's going to be men supporting this, so it's a huge thing. There this are young, it. It's it's like basically young versus old. Like I think it's modern. Great. I think traditional. I think it's fucking great. It's a net positive. It just worries me that there's so much un. Unrest and un- and destability yeah, in need, the world. Sometimes you need the unrest to make change. Yeah, definitely. But like, give me like one at a time, not like seven. Like, I there's know. no place in a, in the world right now that's stable. That's like chill. All right, so maybe it's uphill from here. Maybe yeah, it's maybe. you know maybe I don't know who the fuck knows. It's, we just got to get rid of our government. Yeah, but what if someone worse comes in? Can't be worse. <laughs> Definitely can be. Can't be worse. Definitely. So, does that shirt fit you? Yes. You know, I'm saying you like it. Yeah. I'm just changing something a little bit. We talked about this for a while. Okay. Do you um, want? Yeah. Please. I really enjoy the Kiss, Kiss concert. Did I talk about it before on this podcast? I don't know. I really enjoyed going to the Kiss concert. It was so much fun. They said their last concert ever, which in seven years, when they're when they ran know, through their money, I they're going to do but, another concert. But, well, um, Gene Simmons is worth over four hundred million, so he's never running through his money. He's a smart businessman. But um, they're in their seventies. I think they're done. They were amazing for their age and what they fucking. I I don't know many Kiss songs. I watched uh, no knew a couple of them. It was a great concert. I was six rows. I up. can't believe that Kiss as a band like even happened. That's such a weird. Well, phenomenon. they have a documentary. It's a two part documentary on like Netflix or something. It's odd. like when when they first came out on the scene, were you like you were younger than me, right? Or my you were like a teenager. I something? was younger than you. Were you like, what are these guys? No, we liked them. Like you had no because like if that happened today, right? Let's say there was a band that were people my age, and they were taking like they became popular and they wore these insane outfits, insane hair, all this crazy makeup and like big high heels. They wear high heels, right? The you you if I showed you a band like that on this podcast. You would be like, the world's over. I can't believe these guys are popular. Correct. These absolute, like, this okay, is insane. Okay, you're 100% correct. They're wearing but women's wigs and high heels, and they're painting their face. They're not wearing wigs. That's their hair, but that's a separate issue. But I hear 100%. You. They, they wore wigs all throughout the 80s. They definitely wore wigs. They had their hair on, like, big-ass ponytails okay, and shit. Um, you're right. I'd probably say that, but I've known Kiss. I've grown up with Kiss, and therefore I like Kiss. You yeah, know, I'm not. I'm just saying it's weird. But, like, they're, but they're Why so- were they like, let's paint their face black and white? I you got, I watched part of the document. You'll you'll understand why they would try to be different. They want to stand. It worked for them. Yeah, they've done well. I enjoyed it. What did you want to talk? It's about? It's just funny how it's all like it's all contextual. Because since you grew up with that, you're like they're cool. But if that happened now, you would be like a curmudgeonly old man and be like, it's one more, I can't it's believe one more that. thing. Correct. Yeah, but but then back when you were a kid, and probably your dad was like, "Who the fuck are these idiots?" You're, I don't think he even knew who they were. Or let's say adults were like, this is so stupid, whatever. Or like, you know, people were like. But I get it. I get them saying it's stupid. Yeah, and you, but they probably were like, this is problematic. They're talking about like drugs and sex and all that stuff. And this is like going to ruin the kids and the but youth. we had Ozzy Osbourne who did crazy shit. Great, we had all yeah. that shit. Right, and yeah. you guys turned out to be fine enough. And then now when but you're like, world, your generation right. is ruining it. It's like that's the world, every generation. But the world's a little different today than when we grew up. It is. It's a and yeah, social all, media. We we talk about the same thing over and over on that, but it is still different today. You're concerned, and you're not even my age. So if you're telling me you just before I tr- transitioned to, into Kiss, you're like, I'm just concerned. We have seven things that are unrest. Well, yeah, you're I'm, like, I'm I feel like I'm the child. I feel like I'm the child. You're the old Jewish man. I'm concerned politically because like the world could end because literally like a want what's not one button. It's not ending. Like one button could literally end. It's it. Not and ending. It, if it does, it does. Like there's nothing we can do. But the fact that we're not I even should get to the stop car, it. I should get the car that it's going to end. Yeah, money's not going money's right. going to be value. What do you got going? A value. Um, I was going to do this like Lizzo thing, but I don't, if you want, it was, every, we could just touch on it. Everyone was up Liz, in arms Lizzo's, this week. Lizzo's my friend now. Everyone this week was up in arms on the left and the right. About what? Lizzo, like, the Library of Congress 
loaned out James Mad like James Madison apparently has like had a crystal flute that like was one of his like is in his collection that now belongs to the Library of Congress. Okay, and they loaned it it's out. A, it's like the independent the, the Declaration of Independence that should be fucking behind. Why? It's James Madison's flute. Okay, but my point is that should that should be in the museum. That well, it's in the good. Library of Congress, right? But why should it's it's. I mean, it you didn't even know. You didn't even know up until this moment that it existed, right? Correct. So it's not important. But it is important. Just because I don't know doesn't mean it's not. But it's important. his flute. It's not like the penny used to sign the Declaration. Okay, go ahead. Well, any. So the Library of Congress like invited Lizzo to the Library of Congress to like play it to read, and she was the first person since James Madison to play. Why it. would they do that? Though? And then she pl- played it at her concert. So let's. Let's why would she do that? Lizzo. Good for her, but why would they do that with her is what I'm getting at. Here, this is from Forbes. And so it, the thing is like- wow, it be- She's a powerhouse from a marketing standpoint. It became a huge thing. Oh my God, USA Today's article on it. This is their headline. Lizzo played James Madison's crystal flute. The racists, racists responded. That's USA Today's headline. Look, I'm not even lying. Look, it said it right there. Lizzo played James Madison's crystal flute. The racist responded. She knows how to play the flute? She's a, that's, so a lot of people were like, why did she, before she became famous, she went to college for flute. She's a okay, flute gotcha, major in college. Okay. So like she literally, here, classically trained flautist, was invited to play the 1813 crystal flute. So this is from USA Today. This is not, oh, it is an opinion. Plays okay, dog yeah. whistles. What does that mean? This says, I have bad news, America. Our country has apparently been ruined because Lizzo played an old flute that nobody knew existed. The wildly popular singer, who also is a classically trained flautist, played the flute gifted to James Madison in 1813 during a concert on Tuesday in Washington, D.C. The opportunity came via the Library of Congress, which houses the precious flute and agreed to let Lizzo play it at her show. Her excitement and sense of awe was infectious. I mean, it's crazy how one side of this article is, but her... Excitement was infectious, and the audience's wild reaction to a historic moment was the kind of thing that might inspire people to learn more about history or visit the library. Most would consider that a good thing, but some have decided it's a very bad thing, quite possibly one of the worst things that's ever happened. I mean, this article is very one-sided, but people on the right- One-sided in what way? People on the right were, oh, this article is one-sided in the way that it's like they're portraying, like- Because I didn't get any one-sided yet from what you read. There's- they're clearly being like, what Lizzo did was amazing and awesome. And if you don't agree with that, you're wrong. No, the are, article, they you're, are they saying you're racist if you don't agree? Yeah, that's the, literally the, art, the article title said that. Why is it racist if you don't agree? If it was a white person playing, I don't agree with it. So here they said, well, why? Why? I, just don't, I think that should just not be touched and played. Yeah, I don't know why all of us... Like that, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't care if somebody pl- who played it. It should not be out there for anyone to touch or play. The weird thing is that like no hey, one- Hey, could you lie in Grant's, um, 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 what's it, King Tut? His, like, it's let somebody true. lie in it? No, I don't think it should ever be touched, period. I, I just don't really understand why it happened. Like, why all of a sudden were they like the first person to touch? So it, this is from the Library of Congress. This is from their Twitter page. You didn't think Lizzo played that antique flute on stage without practicing first, did you? She visited the library on Monday, played several of the flutes in our collection, which is the largest in the world. I don't know why they have a flute collection. And this is from the Library of Congress website. It's about danged time. Lizzo at the library. Um, I don't think she should be touching it. Anyone should be touching it. I mean, I guess, I guess here's her playing it. In the Library of Congress. Okay, and look, she's wearing jeans. Look at that. I'm sorry, I'll show a little class. Pause for a minute. Don't you think if you grant that honor, you should have dress appropriately? Don't you think so? Yeah. Isn't that a high level to be asked to play that and you're given that opportunity to play it? And shouldn't you dress appropriately? Je- Tight ass jeans and your belly showing? I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, that's her whole thing. I guess the now that I'm thinking about it, like the, the reason, there is good reason for the left, for not the left, for the library to do this. Like, it's good publicity. publicity. To know what they do. Right, like, I didn't know they had a flute collection. The largest in the world. And it's not going to change, nor do I care. But now we know. So their, but, their marketing yeah. worked. I get it, but, but the, I don't think anyone should touch that. That's my opinion. Yeah. 
And then people on the every both sides had problems with it. Like here's a quote. Well, get a like here's a tweet it. from an hour ago that already has eight thousand likes. It says I haven't read this yet. It says James Madison raped his half sister who was a slave, had a son with her, then sold his child into slavery when he was a teenager, and you all are mad at Lizzo for playing his flute? Is that true what they're saying? Probably. Okay. I'm not mad at Lizzo. There's nothing to do with Lizzo. Here's her playing it at the concert. Get out. Get out. All right. Are you serious? How do you make that bigger? This is at her concert. Look at the outfit she's wearing. Well, it's her concert. Yeah. People are going expecting. Can you play this? What do you mean? One, the right one? Yeah. This crystal is like playing out of a, a, a wine glass, basically. Be patient. Wow. But people. I don't, I, I don't, I just don't agree that it should be touched. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but it's not I so newsworthy that people are angry over no, it's, it. It's not, but people were. Because they have no life. People were angry, and no then life. the left media picked up on it and was like- Ran with it. Yeah, they were like, everyone's freaking out over a fucking flute. You all are wrong. Like, which, yeah, there's probably some kernel of truth, but like, look at this. I I'm don't going think it's to a racist This thing. is all from just today. That thing happened two, three days ago. Oh, get a life. Lizzo, what a waste of time. Like this says, Lizzo plays a 200-year-old crystal flute, accidentally summons a swarm of trolls, Yahoo News, Republicans are mad that the Library of Congress allowed Lizzo, a classically trained flautist, to play James Madison's flute. Billboard, no, Lizzo did not defile James Madison's flute. Um, Philadelphia Inquirer, Lizzo gets a big night of love in her first show after Crystal Flute good performance. By, good for Lizzo. Yeah. She didn't do anything wrong. No. Here, Rolling Stone, conservatives are melting down because Lizzo played James Madison's oh, flute. I think the issue is, has nothing to do with Lizzo, and I think she did nothing wrong, Okay. How I but I think that they the museum should not have allowed her to do it. Museum, right? but yeah. The well the museum too. You said museum. Museum. Yeah. That's how um, I say you got a problem with that? Th there's nothing more I want to say on that, but like yeah, and everyone this week has been talking about it. And I was like, why are we life. even talking Get about it? Get a life. This? It's to me it's a waste of time. Why is the right mad about this? And then why is the left freaking out that the right's mad? And why it's is like, Daddy Issues Pod talking about it? Yeah. So I I just I I Felt like people would have wanted us to talk about it, so there we talked about okay, it. Okay, we don't give a shit. It. I don't give a fuck about it. Um, but let's do a follow advice. Do we have anything else to talk uh, about? Yeah, I have another. I've I talked to an me. article. I actually have two articles that were from the New York Times this month. Which New York Times, as we know, what do you? How do you feel about liberal? Them, right. I don't have a feeling one way or the other. No, no, but like, what is what is it's their? It's a narrative they get across. Their 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 editorials by having the large platform of New York Times. Totally. And what have what have I been saying over the past six months on this podcast that they're going to eventually switch over to uh, because it's got, the pendulum's gone so far that they're going to switch? See, I listen. Aren't you yep. proud of me? Love you, Bob. Love you. no, just no, I'm proud aren't you proud? Yeah. So I've been saying that I feel and like do, it's going too far. And what do I say always? And you say you hope I'm right. <laughs> exact <laughs> words. Wow, it's a little scary. But so the New York Times. Which, but exactly, I'm like yeah. he's not gonna get it there. Which we view as like one of the worst on the left. It's a shame because it used to be legit. Oh, we thought it was legitimized. Yeah. Not saying it was. We thought it was more legit, or it was their their narrative was hidden better, I guess, or it was more legitimate. It or used to be more. Or maybe it used to be based on fact at least. Well, or now it they wasn't just lie. even local news. News used to be fact, and now it's not anymore. Yeah. But right, so go on. The, both of these articles. So I, I scroll through the New York Times pretty much every day. Just just scroll through it to see see what's what's trending. see what's going on because I want to see what their take on things in the world are and for content for this podcast. I've collected these two articles were both from posted in September by the New York Times, and I'll just read you through them because they're really like interesting and very different. Okay, I am subscribed. Very different than what. has been coming out from them. Why are they making me log in again? I don't even remember my password. Oh, fuck. Uh oh, Brownie. No, I mean, I have a New York Times account. I pay $5 a month for it. Let's see. Maybe it's for my Google account. I have no idea. Bro. I can get it on my phone because I have, I'm logged into the app anyways. Okay, yeah, it was through my, no, it's not through my Google account. Give me one second. Problem. I hate they do this shit. Log in. Let's try this. I know it's that email. And let's try. Try this. Check your email to finish setting up your account. No, I don't want to finish. 
Let me get oh, my phone. Oh, God. Um, all right, let's see. So what's the two articles about? So the first one is the title is... Okay, see, I'm locked out of my phone. The title is Privilege is in Crisis. Privilege is in Crisis. Is. Okay. And this is not an opinion article. It's like a, a article that New York Times yep. wrote. It says, just look at our elite private schools. So already, already when I saw that, oh, I was like, no, God. no, but this is the opposite of what you're thinking. When I saw that, I was like, is that a facetious title? Right, Are they like saying right. like, Oh, oh, people think privilege is in the crisis. Then it says, the past few years have witnessed a lot of upheaval in the name of political reckoning. Is the pendulum swinging back to tradition? Mm. That's the headline. Then it says, as we've seen over and over in recent years, privilege is in crisis. Undone by guilt, jittery about an authority that is not eager to relinquish lost in internal conflicts and contradictions. Privilege has earnestly worked to rebrand itself, at times alienated its long then a constituent's backtracked, corrected, wrung its hands. One of the clearest views into the confusion has come by the way of the debate and transformation taking place at elite private schools, where money, entitlement, and the need to showcase a narrow range of progressive commitments share a fraught and intimate space. It is here where a middle-aged black teacher might find himself enduring a rich white child's diatribe on the offensiveness of texts that do not meet the student's own righteous social justice standards. I'm confused. They're saying that the youth has gotten too woke, too social justice, that it's creating all these problems. It said, like this, it said, um, a narrow, it said money and entitlement and the need to showcase a narrow range of progressive commitments. So they're saying like- Or to follow, you're following his bullshit basically. Yeah, and it says, teachers and administrators feel compelled to uphold a distinct set of ideologies. Some are anxious about running afoul of them, but embracing them too is also a problem. Lines not always easily visible are crossed both in and out of the classroom. Earlier this month, the director of student affairs at Trinity, which is on the Upper West Side of New York, was at the center of a scandal that erupted um, when a video was taken of her um, in disguise. In the footage, the director is having a drink with a man who presents himself as sharing her activist leanings. She talks about her political beliefs, the ways in which she incorporates them into her work and her disappointment. Should never happen. Yeah, and so it says, uh, this is a quote, a dis her disappointment that is, quote, white boys who feel very entitled to express their opposite opinions and push back. The director goes on to say that there are certain speakers she would not invite to lecture. She said that her boss is supposed to contract. Could you imagine? Blah, 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 goes on. But it says, by the standards of upheaval in the city's private school world over the past several years, the current friction over dress codes seems minor, but it speaks with an unequal lucidity to the dissonance in which these institutions are not trapped. But that sentence means that this article basically is what it's saying. It's like, these schools who are bastions of tradition, right? Like learning the same stuff. Right. Like traditional values. You know, you have to dress a certain way. You have to look a certain way. You have to act a certain way. The students and the, and the traditions are clashing. And the New York Times is taking the side of the traditions, which we, we would always expect. Sort of, York, sort of like a backfired. Yeah, you would expect the New York Times to be like progressive students taking down the traditions. And they're, they're even, they're saying that, or not saying, they're, um, defending uniforms where the students are saying like, fuck the uniforms. So, I mean, the article, it's a long article talking about this. Um, but I just saw that and I was like, okay, that's one thing. Great. Right. The New York Times is defending tradition. That's something we would okay, have right. tradition yep, in schools yep, 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 amongst yep. the youth. The fact that it says, the, 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 the headline literally said, the past few years have witnessed a lot of upheaval in the name of political reckoning, but is the pendulum swinging back to tradition? That's what I've been saying for yep, months now. Yep, yep. The other article, also in the New York Times, get this one up. So this one is titled, America has a free speech problem. So when I saw that, I was like, what, what do they mean? Because you could think it was one way. And this is what the article says. For all the tolerance and the enlightenment that modern society claims, Americans are losing control or are losing hold of a fundamental right as citizens of a free country. About time. The right to speak their minds and voice their opinions in public without fear or being shamed or shunned. About time. The New York Times is saying That's that. about fucking time. The, this social silencing, the depluralizing of America has been evident for years, but dealing with it stirs yet more fear. It feels like a third rail, dangerous. For a strong nation and open society, 
this is dangerous. How has this happened? In large part, it's because the political left and the right are caught in a destructive loop of condemnation and recrimination around cancel culture. Many on the left refuse to acknowledge that cancel culture exists at all, believing those that who believing those who complain about it are offering cover for bigots to peddle hate speech. While many on the right, for all their braying about cancel culture, have embraced an even more extreme version of censorship as a bulwark against a rapidly changing society with laws that ban books, stifle teachers, and discourage open discussion in classrooms. Many Americans are confused then about what they can say and what they where they can say it. People should be able to put forward viewpoints, ask questions, and make mistakes, and take unpopular but good faith opinions on issues that society is still working through all without fear and cancellation. It goes on. It's a whole long article. I think that's great. I think that's great. That's like a huge thing. I think that's great. Let's push more of that. But that's yeah. what we've always been pushing. We have here. We've always f- said, you, you don't, you, you want, the giving up your right today might fit your narrative might not, today, but might not fit your narrative down the road. And once you give up a power or a right or a freedom, you never get it back. Definitely. But okay. it's just like all these things. The, it's little sparks of, of hope, glimmer of hope. Yeah. And like, when's the last time we used to have a, we literally used to have a segment on this show called cancel culture because in the first year of cancel this podcast, right. there were so many people that were getting canceled and like really canceled, right? Like if someone was deemed canceled, they were gone. We haven't had to use that, that cancel court button in a year because no one's getting canceled anymore. Yeah. Dr. Seuss, Mr. Potato. No one cares anymore. So even like this happened two weeks ago, um, Sydney Sweeney, who is an actress. She's in Euphoria. She's like the blonde girl with the huge tits in Euphoria. She's this actress, whatever. Pictures were posted on, I, I'm, I'm surprised we actually didn't talk about this when it happened, but pictures were posted from her mom's like 50th birthday party online, like on her social media or whatever. And one of her, there were people in the pictures, like her family members who were wearing, one was wearing like a thin blue line hat. So like an American flag with the blue line, which is like, Police. Supporting police. Another person was wearing a MAGA hat, but it was like a riff on it. It was like, make something great again, but it was like a Trump hat. And people like did digging and it turns out her family are conservatives. So what? Right? So what? The left media went at it, literally trying to cancel this actress because her family- Assholes. And everyone online was like, who the fuck cares? And nothing came of it. Where a year ago, if that happened, I bet she would have been fired from her show, right? She would not be on an HBO show. People would have like dropped her, Can right? You imagine but if it was reversed. Definitely would. Have, it's it's stupid, but that one was a big deal because it was like this. If that happened a year ago, people would have freaked out. Now, literally everyone, kids, uh, like on liberal kids who are obsessed with like Euphoria, which is all about trans and shit. You know, it's like as liberal as you can get. We're like, who the fuck cares? Like, let her be her. Unbelievable. No it's, one cancels anymore, is what I'm trying to say. Hopefully, I get it. When's the hopefully. last time someone, like... I get it, but... Even but, people who were canceled are now, like... Like, Louis C.K., he's back. He's on podcast now, doing this shit, and no one gives a shit. Chris D'Elia, back, no one cares. And they should be back. They're yeah. allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. It's your choice not to watch them, but they're allowed to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Yes. So, I, I think now we're starting to see... There's little hints of evidence <clears throat> of... Hope. Glimmer of, of the, hope. Of the pendulum swinging. New York Times even used the word pendulum. Yes. They literally said the pendulum well, they, might be swinging well, back to tradition. Don't they follow us? Yeah, they might. So no, they, not New York Times. New York Post does. Same difference. All right, what do we got for fatherly advice? Those are interesting. I, it's nice to hear that there is that glimmer. Yeah. So we, we had this episode, we had threats of nuclear war, but also glimmer of hope <laughs> at the end. Let me get up for fatherly advice. Vamp, Dad. If you talked about what that means. So- Oh, yeah, I know what that means. So we had, a, as you know, a beautiful weekend. Went away for uh, Mama Nell's birthday. She turned, um, I'm not going to tell you how old she turned, but she um, her birthday was on the 30th. We had a great time with a group of friends. Thanks, shout out to our buddies that uh, we stayed at their place in the Keys. Uh, happy birthday, Nelly. Hope you had a great time. I know I had a nice time, and it was good spending it with you, obviously, and our close friends. And it was a beautiful weekend. And now we're back to reality before we head out again and back out to California. Visit Berkey for Parents Weekend. Can't wait, little man. We're going to have a great time seeing you. It's been probably about six or seven weeks. How long has it been, Ron? Six, seven weeks since we've seen Burke? I have no idea when the last time Yeah, it's been a while. So we're, we're going to go out there and uh, watch, uh, go to USC games, spend time with, with Burke for four days. So I'm really pumped to spend time with him. Really, really excited, Mom and I. And then Bryce and I are going out 
the next month. Which is great, and then he's home. Yeah. No, it's going to be great, so I'm, I'm really excited. So this is from Eric. It says, hey, John and Braun, big fan of the podcast. I look forward to Monday's Oh, wait, wait, week. hold that thought. So I'm in, I'm in the Keys at dinner for Mom's birthday. There's the nine of us at this Italian restaurant, really nice, really good food. And the waiter goes, you look familiar. Have I served you before? He goes, no. I go, buy you on TikTok or Instagram podcast. He goes, oh, my God, yeah. And isn't that funny that he recognized? Yeah. Just thought I'd share that with you. I've been getting recognized a lot. Yeah. It's just if, very, you, if you see us out in person, come to, definitely come Reach out to us. us. Absolutely. We love I that. love it. It's so yeah, fun. Me too. Yeah. So he was pumped, the guy. And it's like the best ego stroke ever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I just wanted to share that with you. Sorry. Go um, ahead. Eric. Eric, big fan of the podcast. I look forward to Mondays every week when you drop a new episode. Thank you. I was hoping to get some advice from both of your perspectives. I admire your relationships, your relationship as father and son, and I want to have that sort of connection with my kids as they grow up That's and nice. become adults. I'm a new father of three, a two-year-old and, and one-month-old twins. Wow. The two-year-old is a girl, and the twins are a boy and a girl. I know while they are young, I will pretty much treat them the same, but I want to make sure as my son gets older, I teach him how to be a strong man. As you guys have said many times on the podcast, our generation was raised too soft. And as someone who didn't have a solid father figure in my life growing up, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. I appreciate any advice you guys can give me. Thanks. Well, first of all, congratulations. Um, with, with all three of your kids, they're all young. You got your hands full. Good. Yeah, geez. Two babies uh, and a two-year-old. Yeah, but it's a beautiful thing. You definitely have your hands full. I would say uh, keep your penis in your pants next time. Very oh, the twins is an accident. Very hard. Very, how do you know it's an accident? I mean, having twins. No one plans twins. Right. Yeah. Excuse me. I would say it's very hard for me to give you advice over the next 15, 20 years because the world can change so drastically. But that's not what did I get you it. do? I, I think. Not based on the times, based on Ma, like you. Mom and I, because I think it's collective, mom and I fostered a close family dynamic. We and how do you do that? Um, we, there was no room for. Stop playing with that. There was no room for interpretation. For example, when when we never, we made sure you kids got along. You worked it out. You made sure that when you spend time with us, that you, there was no opportunity for like I don't want to go or this or that. You're coming no matter what. Uh, we always like to think that we were good parents. So we it is that fine line between parenting and friendship. But we wanted to make it where you guys felt comfortable. I think you need to let your kids know that it's always okay for them to come talk to you, good or bad. Um, that you're always there for them. And I think a big thing is this, whether it's a boy or a girl, there's no free ride. They have to, everyone has to earn their keep, know their role, treat you with respect as a parent. Uh, and I always say this, and it's a hard thing to quantify, but love your kids, but don't let them love them too much. They need to figure things out on their own. Um, and and saying- Or love them as much as possible, but let them be their own people. Yeah, but- Because not loving them too much, that's not what you mean. Well, meaning you can't give them everything. No is an important word in, in raising kids. Um, I think if you, I don't know, we're very fortunate and lucky, your mother and I, in, in the dynamics of our household with all five of us. And that, I, don't know, I don't know how we achieve that. I don't, I don't have a specific thing. I think that they just have to, you, that's a tough, what do you think as a child, for example, like what is it that you found that mom and I did something right there because you kids like spending time with us. I see that. We know that, right? So- what well, is I think it? it's important, like, yeah, I mean, it is hard to pinpoint to quantify, right? but I, I think the biggest thing is it's important to, I don't know how you foster it, but to like your family as well as love them. Like, of course you should always love your family, but there are some people that I of love, course. but I don't really want to hang out with them. Of course. Even though I love them. hundred percent. Because it's just like, whatever, we don't get a, like, they're not the type of person that I want to spend my time with. Correct. Nothing against them. They're just not that type of person. Correct. But everyone in our family, we the all best, like each the other. The best time is when we're together. Like, I think if our family met and we weren't family, we would still be friends, like, as type of people. Right. I don't know how that was achieved. That well, might just be lucky or just because we might all be similar. No, but I, I think also, yes, I hear you. I think that. We've always traveled. Mom and I have always taken you guys away. So we go, we've always done a lot of family things. That could be an important thing too. Cause like you can, like we bonded, right? Like you can bond with friends by like do, going through experience. You can meet a person, you can go through an experience with them and then you bond and become friends. 100%. And so our family has gone through a lot of experiences together. 
So that could have created those <coughs> right, friendship so, bonds. So, so just thinking about that, my advice to you, Eric, would be do as much as you can as a family together when they're little because then that becomes your norm and your kids want to be around. And then, the, and then there are times when your kids get a little older where like we're going on vacation and the kid's like, I don't want to go out with my friends. That's a normal thing. Okay, and you, it's tough. You're coming with us. That's just the way it is. So it's sort of acceptable because it's normal for a 14 year kids to say, I, especially when you have daughters, I hear that a little more tougher. The daughter says, I don't want to go out with my friends or they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, whatever it might be. I think if you say, and you say, okay, we'll bring them, you know, that kind of thing. As long as you, we also made our house where all the kids came. That's what I was just- That was just, an important thing. I was just thinking maybe the biggest and, thing and why and were- I, And I got involved. Like I always took you and your friends to the diner. Like I was always at Halloween Horror- uh, uh, coaching you were very I, you were extremely active participant in our lives right like you always knew you always were involved in things everything yeah sports coaching taking the halloween horror taking i went to every one of your concerts yeah. i was a chaperone every one of your trips. trips chaperone i oh so those were things that mom and i always mom was always involved in the school always involved in the day-to-day stuff with you guys and every trip i chaperone i took you yeah. i went sporting I that's coaching. a good way to like if you're be there, if you're uh, involved in someone's life, then you're gonna be close with them, right? You need to be involved in their life all the time. But why yeah. wouldn't you want to be? Anyway? But I also think like the I think one of the biggest things is that our house was always open. I don't mean like physically open; it was always mentally and emotionally open. Everyone in the family, so it was like, like always. Last night, was, you had all the friends sleeping over. Like we're we're fine with that. That's not even what I meant. That was that definitely it was open that way. But I mean like. There, it was always just a, a part of our household and our family to be like, if you have a problem, say it. Open, like tell it. If you have a concern, share it. If there you're could be worried, consequences too, by the way. There could be consequences, but that's okay. Yeah, but the consequences were always fair and respectable. Where like I have friends whose parents, I have friends on like both who growing up were on both sides of the spectrum. I have parents friends whose parents were like so insanely strict that the friends would hide everything because they were afraid of their parents of like what the parent would do because they would freak the fuck out or whatever. Or I have the, on the other side where the kids like wouldn't share anything with their parents because the parents didn't give a shit. The parents let them do whatever. So why would the kids share what they were doing with their parents if they knew they didn't need permission, right? Mm -hmm. You guys were in the middle where it was like, we wanted to involve you with things because on the one hand, like, we needed to, right? Like I couldn't go to a friend's house without telling you. So you needed to be involved that way. But also then you were always, you would never freak out about something. You were always fair with it. So then if something, right? So I'd always want to share the good things, but then to share the bad things too. Like if I, you know, like when I hit the mailbox, like hit my car, right? Crash my car. Mm-hmm. Some kids would like lie about that shit and like not tell the parents because their parents would like, would freak out. Mm-hmm. But you guys always made it clear that we're always you were you. fair about it. So therefore, we were always, all three of us were felt comfortable to share the good and the bad. So then that, I guess, got you even more involved in our lives. Because like, I feel like as you know, 12 to 16, kids probably want to create their own lives separate from you, their parents. You pull back, yes. But if you fostered beforehand that like your kid can be open with you, like me, Bryce and Burke, I feel like even as teenagers, we incorporated you guys into our lives. We would like tell you about what we were doing with our friends. Absolutely. We would like share. But we like, also like made if we had a problem involved. with a girlfriend or something, yep. we would like come to you about that where I feel like a lot of kids wouldn't. But I think the parents have to force that at a younger age. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. you have to just always, I, I guess, just instill in your kids that you, I mean, you always, you and mom, every, every day of our lives to an annoyance. Like sometimes I got annoying where you guys were like, we're, we love you. We're proud of you. We're always here for you. Like, I remember being 16 and you would like say like, we're always here for you. You know that? And I'm like, dad, I, I know it. You tell me all the time. Like, that's annoying. But I <sighs> guess subconsciously. But as a parent, yeah, it's very important kids know that. I'm yeah. getting all verklempt. But, but as I, I bet that that has a subconscious, plays a subconscious role that me growing up subconsciously in my brain knew that I always had that support system so that like, it wasn't even something I even needed to question. Where I bet some kids like question that, or they're insecure they, yeah. about their security, or they're insecure about their relationship with their parents. Where to you guys, you made it so secure that it was honestly a little bit of an annoying thing because I was like a teenager being like, "All right, stop, mom, kissing, me. stop kissing me." Right. But that is probably what a kid needs from their parent. 
So well, I guess just love them. I think it's very important that your kids know that your parents always have their back. I completely missed my mouth. That's okay. Yeah. I think it's very important because, um, but, but there's one telling them as a parent and then reassuring it and reaffirming it with the physical act. Definitely. Being there. Sh- always, well, you- I always knew no matter what, like still now, which is so valuable and it's like the most privileged thing that I have in my life. And it's also like an irrational, not irrational, it's a, I don't know what the word is. I know like it, it's unfair of me and the life that I have, but I guess it's a good thing that like I know that no matter what problem I have, we'll be fine. Like at the end of the day, even like bad problems, like right, like if I like can't afford to pay for something or I fucked something up or I crashed into something or like like something bad happened or a problem, whatever, like I know like I, that I'm confident for sure that it's like, oh, dad can just handle it if it needs to be handled. It's not even a question of if you can or can't. It's like, oh, that like, that's nice. it's like a full on safety net, which pr- is very privileged to me. I feel like most people don't feel that way. Most people are like, oh God, I don't know how I'm going to do this or that. Uh, if I don't figure that out myself, it's never going to get figured out or whatever. It's like, so I, and I don't know how you, I guess you just always reassured or like when things would go wrong, it was just handled. But, but wait, but I want to, first of all, that's nice. Mom will be, it's nice to hear that as a parent. And I don't just mean when I say dad will handle, I mean you and mom. I know what you mean. But, but we also, we will handle it if you have some skin in the game. You know what I'm saying? That's the way we are. We, we will, we'll help you when you help yourself. That's how we are as parents. I think that's an important yeah. thing because otherwise it's, you're spoiled and we don't but think you're spoiled. we never, yeah, and you, it wouldn't even cross my mind to, like there are times when you want to help me in a certain way and I'm like, no, because Correct. I don't want you to because- you don't have your hand out. You're not spoiled. Right. It wouldn't even cross my mind to to try to take advantage of your and mom's help. I don't think any one of our boys would. We didn't raise. And I think that's that. why you help us exactly, and then right. that reinforces us to to act in the way we do. Right. I guess so, Eric. I think you need to, and it's a little harder for me to advise with girls, but I think you should probably treat them equally. Um, I think that you need to be involved if your employment allows it, and so be involved as much as you can with your children. If it's something with their School events, be there. If something, getting involved in the school, make sure you and your wife are there. It doesn't have to be both. It has to be one or the other, But you, because you, you and your wife need to be a unit. Stay consistent. Be a unit. No is okay. There's nothing wrong with your kids being angry and mad at you because it teaches them foundations and, and, and so forth. But you need to be involved in their lives. The more you are involved in their lives in a good way, not an overindulging way, not where you, you're coddling them, but be there and let them know that you've got their back and you're sharing in those memories, you're sharing in those experiences, you have commonality with them and they know that you're there for them and you become their friend to some degree as well and they want to be around you. If you're going to be the curmudgeon that's always a, a hard ass or, or too liberal, whatever, it's it's not the, it's it, that's why I say it's a tough balancing act. There's no one specific piece of advice I can give you or one thing in the equation that makes it work. It's a totality of of different things, and you'll feel it as they get older. You'll feel it. I think you gotta. I don't know it because I've never parented, but I would. I feel like the key is you gotta get your kids to like you and respect you at the same time. Well, respect is a huge thing because I have, like, going back to I'm just because I can pull examples from my own life. Like, I have friends who don't respect their parents. They like them, but they don't respect them at all. So they just like will take advantage of them. They'll like go behind their back. They won't tell them Disgusting. shit. They'll just do that. Just. Not even because they're like bad kids. They just, and they don't disrespect their parents. They just like don't value. They're like, they're like, why would I? Why would I tell my mom that? Like, it doesn't matter. She doesn't care or whatever. And it's like, no, but she probably does care. She probably is worried about you or whatever. And so it's like, right. but then you also want them to like you. So if you right, like you can respect someone, but right, like a, like a military you general, you can love someone but not like them too. Definitely, yeah. And like a, like a military general probably has the respect of a lot of his people but a lot of them might not like him because he's like so hard or whatever you know i don't know but that's an example Mm -hmm. so you want to walk the balance of like your kid respecting you and your authority but also genuinely liking you as a person enough that they're going to be like okay yeah like i'm gonna i like them i like i get it so it it, that's a that's a very good question you asked not so easy to answer and then i guess how do you said specifically how do i raise my son to be a strong man 
Um, I think you raised him to be a, a, a strong man by giving him and your daughter as well self worth. The more self worth you give your children, okay, and I think they will be happier. Self worth is an important self esteem and confidence is a huge thing. And when you have an opportunity to teach your kids, so let's say whether there's adversity, whether there's something that happens, whether or not you see something on the news or some of your friends that might something with their children. Use those as a learning experience. It's very important because you need to take a step back and use that opportunity to teach your children the good or bad or the ugly with regards to it. So, And another thing that I found is we all have friends that have kids, and when I was younger, you see the kids that are a pain in the ass, the parents that were fucking annoying. Emulate the things that you like. Totally. And make sure, which is the harder part, is to not do the things you don't like. So um, I always say everything's been invented. You're not reinventing the wheel. You have to watch and learn from other people. So when you're online, you see a bunch of, for, let's say, a fast food restaurant and, or whatever restaurant, you see someone disrespect their kids or, or, their, or the kids disrespect their parents, you learn from that and you make sure you bring your kids to be aware of it. Or you see, for example, I say all the time, we're out to dinner and you see a, a, a family of four and the kids are on their iPhones all the time. And do I not bring to your attention all the time? You go, look at that. Well, because none of them like each other. Correct. If they're all on their iPhone, then they don't but, like each other. Right, but my point is, it's it's a, well, they, it's not that they don't like it, so they might not know how to deal, or they might not know how, to, it's easier, and they're lazy. So, these are things you need to yeah. be For aware young of. young kids, yeah. And you need to emulate the things that you see that you like, and the things that bother you, and you'll know what they are, don't do them. And things that bother you about your parents raising you, and they might have done the best that they can, make sure you don't repeat those things, because we're not perfect but you need to work on the things that you don't like and don't want done to repeat and it'll work out for you. Yeah, right? last thing I just, because you said something that sparked this, but I don't remember what it was. But whenever you would, um, like what did you say? that in the, At the start of what you just said, you were like, you got to teach your kids what you were saying. Self-respect and self-worth. Self-worth yeah. and, pers- and confidence and, like you got, and self-esteem. I, I remember a big thing that... that like that I'm thinking about now was that when we were younger, whenever we would be disciplined or talked to about something or, t- oh, you were like, you got to teach your kids lessons and stuff. Mm-hmm. Whenever we were taught a lesson about something, it always was like, you would always say, you and mom would be like, I'm disappointed or I'm upset at this situation, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. Right. You would always be like, I love you and nothing you'll do won't change. Nothing you can do will change that. But in this right situation, now, what it, you right. did was not how you should have done, but we still love you. Right. So I think that's important. Like, even when you're trying to teach kids teach lessons, them. like, reassure them that you're still on their side. Right, because kids some, are young and stupid. Yeah. And they don't know. And they're mixed emotions. They, they got hormones coming. They don't know the feelings. They don't know what's right or wrong. You got to teach them these things. So but I feel like that's a big thing because then it's like, oh, I still know that my, my parents like me and I still like them. Where some kids probably would get disciplined by their parents and be like, Fuck my parents. Right, but, but they're and assholes. That's, that's a normal feeling for a kid to think their parents are assholes because that's just. But for five minutes, but not, not for five days. Right, I think, listen, I think you need to also do not rule your children with fear. Do not get the respect by fear that you don't do that. I, think I don't a, know if you can get respect by fear. But discipline people, but don't. You can make, get disciplined by right, fear, but not right. don't respect. Dis- don't discipline with your children with fear. I think that kids, if you, if you love your kids and you cherish and value them, their opinion matters. That you need to listen to them. You don't have to agree with the their respect opinion. goes both ways. Correct. You don't have to agree. Like how many times do I say, "Sell me on it." And just because, yeah. and, or a and, lot, or a lot of times you just would be like, "I hear you. I understand. I don't agree, but that's not happening." Right. And 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 then they say, "Why?" Which you know, I think, and I go, "Why?" Because I say so. I don't owe you an explanation if I'm supporting you or you know yeah. when you're little. And as a kid, that's so frustrating. But now, as an adult. I look back and it's like, yeah, that's hundred percent a justifiable response. Okay, is because kids are stupid; they don't right, know the it, the rationale behind things. But is it any different than when I used to work for my boss and he says, "Do this." I'm not saying he needs to explain to me why. Yeah. He's paying my paycheck. Yeah. So when I was starting off as a young lawyer and he says, "I want you to do this," I wouldn't be like, "Why?" You know what I'm saying? He. The, so there's you just need to know your hierarchy. And kids don't know that, so you just got to be like, it "You got to teach is. them." You know, you got to teach. So it's, it's a lot to it. But mutual you, respect is a great one. And, and but I also think giving you kids. Um, emulating and doing what you like, what you see, what you like, and make sure you don't repeat the things you, because it's already out there. You see the annoying fucking kids. You see the annoying fucking parents. You see the kids running around the restaurant and the parents do nothing about it. Don't fucking do that with your kids. Yeah. And don't give up. Like It's consistency. Don't don't be like, oh, all right, we're tired. Just take the iPad. Like, 
No, maybe you, every once in a while, fine. You like, and your wife, have, you and your wife have to be consistent. They're your kids, right? But it's not easy. It's exhausting. Oh, I'm sure it's not. That's Especially just, it's scary. A one year old and two twins. That's scary. Well, but it's like you only have that. Like that's your life. So don't fuck up that. You'll be fine. The fact that you're asking and wanting to do that says a lot about it. So I appreciate it, Eric. So we hope we answered your question, everybody. We love you guys. Thank you as always. Ronnie, love you, buddy. Love Let's you too. Soon. You're joking, right? Well, yeah. I'm trying to be hopeful. I'm trying to be optimistic yeah. about that. Well, I guess you're too young to be a little pessimistic like me. The fucking things I see out there, people are stupid.